Dante. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny, and usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. I'll cut this a little short, as the intro is the same as it was for the last Warhammer anthology. Lent to be by my good buddy Rewitch Yazagawa. I'm going to preface this review with a quick aside. It's been a while since I last did a 40k based book review. This is largely down to one man and one novel, Graham McNeil and The Chapters Do. The sheer waste of that novel, the, the squandering of all that potential and the smurf loving tedium of it all really annoyed me, probably more than it should have. But it's been a while, and a quick blast of Dark Crusade, coupled with rereading First and Only, have done an awful lot to rekindle my 40k enjoyment. So long as I avoid any McNeil penned Ultra Smurf story, things should be alright. Fuck this shit, fuck it, and burn it with a purifying flame! I got four pages into this 54 page short, and I gave up. The last thing I need right now is another story where the Smurfs wank themselves into a coma over how great they are. A story that's about as low level as you can get, and despite the setting is probably a very good study of human nature under stress. It's pretty well written, although I wasn't a big fan of the structure, if only because the twist it was being used to hide wasn't much of a twist. Space Marines are, as a concept, overpowered, which makes it difficult for them to be awesome. Which is why I really enjoyed this story. It takes a salamander and a smurf, removes their power armor, and pits them against foes that outclass them. And that is when Space Marines are at their most badass. A great high-level look at just how much the Imperium has degenerated since War's Rising and is slowly becoming the fascist state we all know and love. The only thing I hated was how the identity of one character was hidden at the start. It was dramatically pointless and poorly done. This is very well written, well paced and manages to maintain a decent bit of mystery. My only gripes are that, one, this probably would have meant more to me had I read either Prospero Burns or A Thousand Sons, and two, my foreknowledge of the 40k universe robbed a well-constructed dramatic moment of, well, the dramatic bit. A very decent entry dealing with the aftermath of Istvan. The ending, though, was a contrast of funny and frustrating. It was funny because I love seeing douchebags get their comeuppance, but it was frustrating because the type of situation it potentially set up has a tendency to annoy me. Overall, this is not a bad tale, mainly due to Abnet's writing which does save it, but because of what must happen, bearing in mind the Horus Heresy series are effectively historical novels, there ended up being far too much plot armour, plot skill and plot convenience for my taste. This is simultaneously my favourite and least favourite of the anthology. It's my favourite because the bad guys get utterly demolished in what are some well written action scenes and after so many wins for the enemy it was nice to see this. But it earns my ire because the reason for the battle was trivial bordering on pointless. Another damn fine short if only because I enjoy learning about and seeing the Primarchs. It also does a fantastic job of showing just how puny a space marine is when compared to the demigod that is a Primarch. I seriously didn't read past the first four pages of the first story in this anthology. I got bored of it so quickly it was untrue and I left the whole thing untouched for the better part of a year. When I picked the anthology up again I skipped the first story entirely and I had a much better time of it. Overall, rules of engagement notwithstanding, this is a decent enough anthology. And yes, I'm definitely damning it with faint praise. 
There are some good tales here, but they are surrounded by some decidedly average ones.